Uh, we've had these moments before. I don't want to. I don't want to over overstate what's happened. Meaning there have been moments where we thought things were narrowed <clears throat> down, and then they weren't narrowed down. Uh, maybe they're more narrowed down today. But uh, Hugh, Hugh, give a, give us a lay of the land of, of where you think this lands. Well, I mean, to your point, Andrew, let's take a stroll down memory lane really briefly. Back in 2018, January 2018, uh, J.B. Morgan and the board put out a press release saying that Jamie Dimon would be around, would serve in his current function for approximately another five years. Well, fast forward three years to, to the current moment. And, uh, you know, with the setup of Jen Peepsack uh, and Marianne Lake, you know, both super capable women who've served more than 20 years at J.B. Morgan, both people who've served as CFO, uh, and both 51 years of age, uh, by happenstance, uh, we have sort of a, a bake-off, a classic Wall Street bake-off between these two women who are the, you know, uh, in the pole position to be the successor to Jamie Dimon. And I, what I think this shows is basically the, the board, look, he's 65, Jamie Dimon is. He had a close brush with death, we learned, uh, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic last year. And it would be irresponsible for the board to not have a really solid successor plan uh, and so, you know, my understanding is the company has said this. Uh, he's going to serve a significant number of years. The board has apparently asked Jamie Dimon to serve a significant, quote, significant number of years. And that translates to five to six or seven years further. So when Jamie Dimon is approximately 70 is when the current thinking is that he will sort of ride off into the sunset. However, uh, he could always change his mind and decide to continue serving if he's still going strong, is, is my, my personal belief. Right. Kate, I'm, I'm with you on this in, in that, you know, I remember the 2018 five-year mark, and which means we'd be coming up right on it. And I, I think there's at least another five years uh, to go, and the bank seems to be, be doing quite well. What's, what's your take? Well, Andrew, right, right on. And I was joking around with Glenn Shore, the analyst from Evercore yesterday, about the number of years in which Jamie has said or his his representatives have said he's going to serve for at least another five years. It's it's definitely more than just one five year stint that we're renewing now. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the stock reaction yesterday was relatively modest. You saw a little bit of a spike in the morning, and then it kind of fell, but not by not by dramatic uh, percentages by any means. So I think shareholders are comfortable with Jamie. They're used to the current executive hierarchy. Um, I think we've all heard very good things about Marianne Lake and Jennifer Peepsack. I mean, they've both been CFO. They have both run businesses now and will have an opportunity to run what is J.P. Morgan's largest business. The investment bank is closing in on the consumer and community bank in terms of revenue, but the CCB is still the largest business with over $50 billion in revenue per year. So I think it's interesting and, and, and very cool to see women advancing on Wall Street. Obviously, these two, if, if one of them were to be the successor to Jamie, actually wouldn't be the first woman to run a major bank. That uh, that opportunity goes to Jane Frazier, who was installed as the head of Citigroup in, in February. But yeah, I mean, I think they've got a hit by the bus plan, Andrew. I think probably Daniel Pinto sits in that spot with Gordon Smith now retiring. Um, and I think Jamie thinks highly, as do shareholders of these two women, but not at all clear, as Hugh said, that this is in the in the near term offing. Right. I. I I, I hate the idea of the, the hit by the bus idea, but if, if I, 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 it's a fascinating phrase, Kate, if that were to happen tomorrow, and hopefully, of course, it does not, you think Daniel Pinto gets that job? I think so. And I think there are probably others uh, they could tap. Um, but yes, I think Daniel's in that position. I don't know that he's regarded as the CEO in sort of an orderly succession. But yes, I think if there was some unexpected need to fill the role, I think he's probably in the pole position. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.